Okay, I think it's time to start. Yes. Oh, there we are. Hello. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Deborah Fortier, and I am presenting part two of learning to read music through poetry. Uh, we had our first session on Monday, and I'm very uh, excited to be here once more. Uh, I love poetry written for children. I love music, and I love the piano. And I love all of you out there who have decided to watch this. So thank you so much for participating and thank you to Allison Kiger. This is part of the Bar Harbor Music Festival's 54th season. And we are all online, of course, this summer. And uh, I am, uh, I'm in charge of the young audience concerts. We usually have uh, a lot of our players performing uh, for the kids in the Jessup Library in the Northeast Harbor library on Mount Desert Island, but this summer I am uh, speaking to you from New York City. Uh, so uh, welcome to Antonio Galera, pianist who has performed multiple times at our music festival and has, uh, and hello, Antonio, can you hear me? Under yes, I can hear you. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to enjoy, I'm going to enjoy tonight. Thank you. And it's very late there in Spain, is it not, Antonio? 11 o'clock, is it? It is around 11 o'clock, yes. Five That's past right. 11, yes. Well, I'll, I'll put you to sleep with beautiful music. <laughs> beautiful Thank poetry, you. anyway. Uh, so, you. as I did on Monday, I, um, I had some helpers, and I chose these helpers. This is Susie, my little green-faced dog, who is... Um, probably about 65 years old, but she's, she's like my Chico, my little monkey here, uh, and all my little animals who are helping me today. They, um, yes, they, they still look good for their age. <laughs> and they're gonna help me pick which poem I will be talking about and playing for you. Now we, we're, we managed on Monday to, uh, to recite and play and talk about uh, seven of my poems. I wrote 24 poems and divided them into these two books, starting with just C and D here in this book, and then uh, there, there are 10 in here, and then working our way into more complex pieces in book two. So uh, I didn't want to go in order. I wanted to just take some chances and, uh, and pick a poem to talk about. Now, since we have, we have uh, Antonio here, uh, Antonio, if, if you want, I'm not seeing your, your picture for some reason, but there you are. If you would like to ask any questions in English, please uh, feel, feel free. I would love to have your input and your any reactions or answers. You don't have to ask a question, you can answer. So I have picked with the help of, uh, with the help of Susie, I went into my little magic box here, my little note box, my little music box, we'll call it. And I picked out Maggie and Millie and Molly and May. And that is a beautiful poem by E.E. E. Cummings, and he wrote a lot of poems for adults, but he wrote this one, which is actually for children, but I think it's also for adults. And when you hear it, I think you'll know why. It's got layers of meaning. Now, I am going to share the screen with um, one of the beautiful illustrations done by my friend, Jenna Bocella. So this is Maggie and Millie and Molly and May. And I hope you can see that. It's a picture of all four girls. Maggie and Millie and Molly and May went down to the beach to play one day. And Maggie discovered a shell that sang so sweetly she couldn't remember her troubles. 
and Millie befriended a stranded star whose rays five languid fingers were. And Molly was chased by a horrible thing which raced sideways while blowing bubbles. And May came home with a smooth round stone as small as a world and as large as a loan. For whatever we lose, like a you or a me, it's always ourselves we find in the sea. Now, I hope that we're doing this right here. Uh, all right. So this happens to be the last piece in book two. And it's not really the hardest piece. I just loved it so much. I thought it would be a good way to end. So um, we've learned quite a few things uh, in these two books at this point, And we're actually playing in six, eight time. And we have eighth notes and we have rests and we have a fermata. So we have a number of things in musical notation that the student by this time is becoming aware of and should should be able to play. So here's Maggie and Millie and Molly and May. And by the way, I love I love six eight time. I feel it's right for this poem. Maggie and Millie and Molly and May went down to the beach to play one day. And Antonio, who's watching. Antonio, would you un unmute yourself and tell me if you can hear that and if you can see the illustration? I actually cannot see the illustration now. I can hear you. Okay. I cannot see the illustration. So um, did you see the illustration in the beginning? I didn't. I didn't. All right. Let me see. But, if I can... but but you were sharing the screen. I was sharing the screen, but not with the illustration. Can you see it now? Oh, I can see it now. It's beautiful. Ah, all right. So now we see Maggie and Millie and Molly and May. We used to have this in my shore house uh, down on the Jersey shore, uh, up on the wall with a beautiful watercolor, this poem. So I've known it my whole life. Well, uh, this is a great poem, I think. Uh, did you enjoy it, uh, Antonio, if I can put you on the spot, being my audience member here? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. I did. The, the uh, ending of this poem is, um, is kind of grown up. So if I have any youngsters listening, uh, you might want to listen to this part because it's... Okay. Um, it's <laughs> so it's, uh, for whatever we lose, like a you or a me, it's always ourselves we find in the sea. I think that's a beautiful ending. Would you like to comment on that or should I just go ahead? You can go ahead. <laughs> you can go ahead. So it was just feeling, beautiful. <laughs> so my feeling about that is it's, it's a little bit um, of a puzzle. Why would you lose a you or a me? Well, I think sometimes we just don't feel very good and we don't know who we are and we don't know why we're not feeling good and we're, we might be a little upset about something. So that's why he's saying for whatever, for whatever we lose, like you or me, and then he writes, 
It's always ourselves that we find in the sea. Now I see that, that what you, what you have in life, who you are, you're going to find in life things that reflect who you are. Hmm. Does that make sense? So that if you yes. are, if you are a, a May, as in this poem, May seems to be uh, somebody who would, who would actually go and find this stone and be amazed by it and think about it as small as a world and as large as a loan. So the reason I wrote these uh, little songs was uh, for anybody who had not uh, heard me on Monday, uh, was um, to help make learning note reading more interesting. Not just interesting, but more of a complete aesthetic experience. So I am um, going to see if anybody else is waiting in the wings here. Uh, uh -huh. So, um, and so I've, I've combined music with art and with these beautiful little poems, most of which I got from this little, this little book. Uh, here we go. All right, which is called My Little Book of Poems. And it's just a little 79 cent, maybe even less than that, book that I got in the local grocery store many years ago. And I read each of these poems to my children and I set each of these poems to music. Because I found that learning note reading in the very beginning with my students was a little bit boring. And I wanted to bring, uh, bring a little bit more life to it. Now we're going to have Alexandra. This is my Alexandra. And she is going to pick another piece. So let's see what we have. Ah, so she picked Cold Old House. Now Cold Old House is the second piece in book one. So we haven't learned a lot yet. <laughs> We're just beginning. And Cold Old House, I'm going to get you the picture now. I'm going to try to get you the picture. Here we go. Cold Old House. Uh, here we go. So, yes? Yes. Good, thank you. Cold old house, we just learned C and D in the right hand, and now we're gonna learn C and B in the left hand. I know a house and a cold old house, a cold old house by the sea. If I were a mouse in that cold, cold old house, what a cold, cold mouse I'd be. And there you see in the house, Jenna Bocella has put our little mouse with a cap on and even a scarf. And there are icicles hanging from the roof. And very interestingly in this picture, I want to ask our participant here, I'm gonna put you on the spot, Antonio. Are you there? <laughs> uh, I'm having trouble getting, getting everybody here. I'm uh, here, I'm here, you can ask me. All right, can you see the picture? Yes. All right, Allison. <laughs> I'm here too. I'm here right. too, you can ask us. All right, is this, is this a mouse size house or a regular size house? We don't know it because we, we, don't, we just see trees around, but they can be weeds. I think I vote for mouse sized house. Well, it took me many years. You guys are very smart. <laughs> yes, I, I thought it was a regular size house, but when I think those are weeds or grass. So bravo to you too. You passed the test. <laughs> it's just a little mouse size house. 
So uh, we're going to talk about that piece now. Ooh. Uh, so in this piece, we're learning C and B. And you know, it would have worked out really nicely, but it didn't when I wrote this piece because I know a house in a cold old house, a cold old house by the sea, right? That's the first part of this poem. But when I get to the word uh, cold old house by the sea, I'm playing the note B. And then it goes, if I were a mouse in that cold old house, what a cold, cold mouse I'd be. So that didn't work out either because I'm, I'm playing the note C. And I thought that would be potentially confusing for anybody trying to learn their notes. So I wrote this little poem that says, this little song for you and me is only made with B and C, but somewhere in this song you'll see note B with C, spelled S-E-A, and C with B, spelled B-E. So I hope you guys are not confused. All right, we're going to pick so we, we have done eight of my poems. And, um, and by the way, I should tell you who the poems are by. And I think that one is anonymous. No, let's see. Yes, that's anonymous. So we don't know who that's by. Let's see who we're gonna pick now. So we have uh, 16 more poems that I haven't done. Happy thought, happy thought. All right, so. Happy Thought is in book two, and I'm going to screen share here. And Happy Thought. So there is Jenna Bocella's Happy Thought. So you, you have to know the words to know why she drew that picture. And that's in book two. So we've already introduced eighth notes, just introducing eighth notes. I think it's one of the first ones with eighth notes because I made it very easy. It's just a simple little couplet by Robert Louis. St it's not the first one. No, Happy Thought is uh, the first one, I think, in six, eight time. There you go. And it's a, a little couplet by Robert Louis Stevenson, who wrote magnificent poems in the child, a child's garden of verses. And um, the world is so full of a number of things. I'm sure we should all be as happy as kings. So she, Jenna decided that she would draw a beautiful world for us. And I think it is. Now, what I did with this um, piece this little couplet, very short, is I uh, worked with a scale. A scale is when you move by steps, when you go up and down the piano by steps rather than by skips. And uh, it's really just a very simple scale, but I didn't start on what usually is the first note of a scale. I started on an upbeat. So we talk about that when I work with my students. Uh, the reason I start with an upbeat is because the first world, the first word is the. So you don't want the to be so important. The, you want the world. So there you go. The rhythm of the poem dictates how the music should be written. So this is a very simple song to go with a very simple poem. The world is so full of a number of things. I'm sure we should all be as happy as kings. So we ascend, which means we go up the scale, and then we come down. And it's all in 6-8 time, so it's very easy to learn how to count eighth notes being one beat. Now, we're making headway. Does anybody have any questions or comments? 
I have picked this one. Little Wind. Little Wind. Little Wind. I'm happy about Little Wind because Little Wind is one of my favorites. Little Wind is... Somebody told me it sounded like a Native American tune. I got It's in book two. And this one... Little Wind... is by Kate Greenaway. And we use eighth notes. And it's a little tricky. Where's the, where's the picture? Getting there. <laughs> All right, oh, when you see the picture, do you also see me? Yep. Oh, okay. All right, Perfect. I can do that. Not that I'm that important. I think the picture is most important, but it would be nice to see me play. All right, so here we go with the poem. Little wind blow on the hilltop. Little wind blow on the plain. Little wind blow up the sunshine. Little wind blow off the rain. And you can see in this poem, I'm sorry, you can see in this illustration, how she made the wind, right? And it's blowing off the rain, just like it happens in nature. And guess what? In my, in my music, I did the same thing. I blew off the rain. Now, how, you're gonna hear how I, at least I tried to do that. All right, here we go. Little wind. Little wind blow on the hilltop. Little wind blow on the plain. Little wind blow up the sunshine. Little wind blow off the rain. So what, how did I blow off the rain in the music? Well, I'll tell you what I do with my students. Is everybody still there? Because I cannot. Yeah, I'm listening. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm, I'm here too. I'm here too. And right. there is no. There's things. someone. There's your friend Michelle who has not uh, asked you anything, but she's saying that she doesn't know if she sees you or not. I, can't, I don't know how to get her. I don't know how to get her in. But she's she's there. She's on Facebook and she misses you and she's listening all the activity. Okay. So, all right. She's, um, she's there. You. She's there. All right. Thank you. Put in waiting room. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so little wind. Uh, this is what I make my students do. Can you see me? Yes. All right. I make them pat their head and rub their tummies at the same time. So, if you can't do this, don't worry. But if you can, it's a wonderful thing to be able to do. And you have to practice it because in piano, your right hand does one thing and your left hand does another uh, almost all the time. <laughs> so then if you're good at this, you have to do it the other way and rub your tummy and pat your head. Now, in this piece, Little Wind, the right hand is the head patter. and that's the rain. And the left hand is the wind. So the left hand is what's called legato, which means smooth and connected. And the right hand is staccato. And if you'll notice the composer, me, I let the wind carry on a little bit after the rain has blown away. So it's held. So for a beginning pianist, that can be a challenge. So I, um, are there any questions? <laughs> yes, Allison. I think you have to let Antonio back into the meeting. Oh dear. I don't know how this, it's all, it's all gone to something else. <laughs> I got you and I got, all right. If you go back to your Zoom. All right. This is terrible. <laughs> okay.
So maybe stop the screen sharing for a second. And then look for the participants. Ah, uh, there are participants. So. Antonio. Oh, <laughs> I'm back in. I'm back in now. I'm back in. All right. Did I knock you out? Yes, I think so. <laughs> this did not go according to plan. So did you <laughs> did you miss this? I missed everything about this. Little last. wind? Yes. I I heard, uh, but I heard the whole little wind poem. With, so at with the you end, singing. we have the rain in the right hand. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm very proud of that phrase. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I, I like it. I like it the way it goes with the poem. I like the way my students uh, need to learn that and coordinate their left hand with their right hand. So does anybody have any questions or comments? Now, we're going to go ahead. And now I have first snow. We're making progress. Let's see, first snow is uh, another piece that I like a lot. I think I like all my pieces, which is the way it should Cri be. Christopher, Christopher and Jessim say that they're loving the presentation. <laughs> I need this feedback. Thank you, darling. All right. First Snow, a poem by Marie Louise Allen. Snow, I, I like this. It works for teaching modes. Snow makes whiteness where it falls. The bushes look like popcorn balls. And places where I used, where I always play, look like somewhere else today. Now, how can I share the screen and not lose Antonio? You'll be fine. You can do it. <laughs> All right. All right, so first snow. Oh, dear. Now, did you catch that, musicians, everybody? Places where I, and places where I always play look like somewhere else today. So I'm gonna read that again. Snow makes whiteness where it falls. The bushes like, look like popcorn balls. You see how she drew those? And places mm -hmm. where I always play look like somewhere else today. So what's going on in this piece? I'll play it for you. Snow makes whiteness where it falls. The bushes look like popcorn balls. And places where I always play look like somewhere else today. All right, musicians. What's the point of that? <laughs> What do you think I'm teaching in this piece? Any idea? It's a minor mode. You got it. So <laughs> we've been playing all these notes. A, Allison, go Allison. <laughs> we've been we've been playing a lot of pieces. This is like probably the fifteenth piece, or no, probably even more than that, uh, of these two books. And we've been playing all these notes, but we never played in minor. We always played in major. So using these same notes in this piece, we have transformed the sound, just like snow transforms the landscape. And so I thought that was a, a perfect match. Yes. I'm very proud so of myself. You... I'm proud of you, Allison. And I knew you knew it too, Antonio. <laughs> so this, this same piece could have been played in major mode no, I, I didn't put it in major mode because, uh, well, if I started on A, I would have had a C sharp. And I have uh -huh. introduced sharps and flats, I have, but I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted okay. to do all white keys and I wanted to- and I All white keys and all, yeah, yeah, yeah. It minor. Makes a lot of sense. And uh, so we're making good progress. Now, this is, this is my friend, Chico. Anybody mm -hmm. who watched on Mondays met Chico. For some reason, I noticed Chico does not have a tail, but still, he's a wonderful little monkey. And somebody told me, I think it was Yisham, that she had a dog named Chico. I think it was Yisham. 
All right, Chico, what have we got? Hippity hop to bed. I'd rather sit up instead. But when father says must, there's nothing but just go hippity hop to bed. So what potential we have in this little poem to do some, a lot of things. I mean, you have hippity hop, so you know that you're not gonna go in a straight line, you're going to jump. When father says must, well, that's, that's going to be something emphatic, something that you're going to mean very strongly in music. When father says must, and then I have a ritardando, which means you slow down, there's nothing but just. And there I have a fermata because you want to know what's going to happen. There's nothing but just go hippity hop to bed. All right. So there you go. So I'm um, hippity hopping all over the piano, all over the notes that the student has learned so far. So not all over the piano, but in this area. <laughs> I'd rather sit up instead. But when father says must, there's nothing but just. Go hip a tea pop to bed, to bed, go hip a tea pop to bed. I like that. I like, I like the picture. So I'm going to share that picture with you. Hippity hop to bed. I'd rather sit up instead. There she is. Mm -hmm. With her bunny. With her bunny. I think that my friend did a beautiful job. The pictures are very simple, very straightforward, just like the poems. We have time for a few more, maybe one or two more. Let's do two more. Singing time. Thank you, Allison. <laughs> we have singing time. I could choose all my favorites, but I think I already have. They're all my favorites. Singing time. Now, singing time, that's where we get this title. I sing and I sing and I sing. It's a lovely poem. We're going to stop hippity hopping and we're going to go to singing time. There we go. Woo. Got to get a dog in there, right? All right. I wake in the morning early and always the very first thing. I poke out my head and I sit up in bed and I sing and I sing and I sing. Ta -da! Hmm. So I don't know how many of you out there wake up in the morning and feel that way. What a wonderful poem. And I think it makes the little dog happy. And this look, is the poem. Look who's oh, here, Debbie. Ah, <laughs> my friend Dante. Is, Dante is listening to your presentation. He's a bit sleep, but he's listening to your presentation. One day I will meet Dante in person. <laughs> One day. All right. I wake in the morning early. Now, um, I wake in the morning early. I'm always the very first thing. I woke up. thinking about how similar poetry is to music. You get to a point in, in the poem where you're left up in the air, just like a, a, in a cadence. And then we're not happy until it ends. And you have that final rhyme and you have that final phrase and it concludes and you feel finished and done. And it happens in all of these sweet little poems. And I think in all good poetry, whether it rhymes or not. So what I did with this very, for anybody, uh, colleagues listening, I said singing time is actually fingering time. So I offered two good fingerings for this piece uh, that the student could choose which one they liked better. Because you do have choices in music. And we're gonna choose one more, Allison. Sure, one more. 
<laughs> one for the road. All right. And the last one is fuzzy, wuzzy, creepy, crawly, caterpillar, funny. You will be a butterfly when the days are sunny. Winging, flinging, dancing, springing, butterfly so yellow. You were once a caterpillar, wiggly, wiggly fellow. That's a funny one to end with. It's in book one. We haven't learned a lot of notes by now, but I'm kind of adding, I think, one note to our repertoire. So we're, yeah, here we are. It's a poem by Lillian Schultz. Now you'll notice in the beginning, we have just a, a wiggly little caterpillar. But then when we start winging and flinging and dancing and springing, we, we don't go in a straight line. We go, it, we, we take leaps and, and bounds. Fuzzy, fuzzy, creepy, crawly caterpillar, funny. got to get the illustration up there. There we go. Another beautiful illustration to go. So we have art and poetry and music trying to make beginning note reading into something that is an aesthetic experience for young people, for their teachers, and for the families that need to listen to them practice. It's not the only books that I use when I teach. I use other books as well. Uh, but I find that the kids, most of my students, I'd say all of them, they, they love these. Their favorite one is birthday cake, C and D. C and D. How can you possibly love a piece that's made up of C and D? Two notes only, because the illustration is so magnificent and the poem is so endearing. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Thank you for uh, joining me on this journey. It's been an experience for me, uh, <laughs> technically, but it's also, I've gotten some nice feedback and I really appreciate it. And so I hope you all stay safe. Join us for the uh, concert on Friday night, Christopher Johnson, the great pianist, performing once again. The second recital, we have a uh, string orchestra coming up. Uh, Francis Fortier conducting, somebody I know very well. And, um, and Allison, thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you, done. Debbie. That was really fun. All right. Well, well, we loved it. You have to translate this into Spanish too, for the <laughs> Spanish kids. I knew you were going to do I just wish, I just wish they would, they, they, they understood what it is. Oh, you just a beautiful, got a beautiful work. Thank you. Teach your students English. Speak. You know what, even if they don't know all the words, they'll get a sense of it. And you add the you add the pictures and it'll start to come through. You add the pictures and the music, the words will start to make sense to them. I would go in that direction. I'm I will, not, I will I'm follow, I will you. follow your advice. <laughs> I'm not trying to sell you a book. I'm just saying, I think that, that people are very open and you know both languages, so you can help them along. But the language, Music is a language unto itself, as is art. So thank you. Thank you anyway, everybody. Please said, Debbie. OK, enjoy your evening. You too. Good bye. night. OK, bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night.